A very warm welcome indeed to you all. I'm so glad to see you all as uh, as usual, and a huge amount yeah. of people piling into the chat already. So <laughs> thank you so much for engaging and uh, telling us who yeah. you are and where you're from. Usual suspects as well. Anyway, if you're new here, and I suspect a few of you are, I'm Michael Bott. Um, I'm in Warwickshire, um, and he... I am Rupert Soskin, and I am down in the south of France, actually, uh, uh, just 50 miles north of Spain, roughly. Yeah. I yeah. do suspect, because the star of the show tonight, our guest Hugh Newman and Megalethmania itself has, though I'm loath to say it, have quite a few more followers on YouTube than we do. And mm -hmm. uh, I really hope, uh, you know, that, that uh, some of you are being with us for the first time, um, you know, Megalithomania uh, fans. Hope you enjoy being with us and and uh, what, what, uh, what we're up to. Uh, if you've got a moment, mm. hit the subscribe button and... Um, Hit the like button so we can catch up with megalithomania. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Any news before we we get uh, you on? I mean, this is twice in two nights, so I mean, uh, you know, I know, I know. We're just we're pushing uh, the boat. A bit. On. Well, it seemed the most sensible thing. I mean, a lot of you know. You know, we're we're talking to megalithomania this year. We were scheduled. Hugh booked us for last year before. Uh, well, we were booked two years ago, weren't we, to do last year, and then COVID mm. happened and that was all cancelled. Uh, and we were all expecting it to go perfectly swimmingly this year, but we're still locked down. So uh, Hughes changed everything for it to be an online conference, which we're still doing. So mm -hmm. we thought the best thing to do would be to get him on to just have a live chat to I have tell to you what's say, yeah. happening this year. I have to say, Hugh has been a long-time supporter of us, and you know, in our yes, previous existence as uh, Standing with Stones, and uh, you know, one of the first uh, sort of people to promote the DVD when it came out in uh, in two thousand and eight. Uh, and I remember meeting Hugh for the first time. First time I went down to Megalithomania, I think probably that year in two thousand and eight, and having in Glastonbury and having a jolly. Uh, uh, jolly fine time. I think I met a couple of other occasions at a festival or other here. There, I remember uh, giving a giving a talk in a yurt. And anyway, <laughs> you can tell you about that later. Yeah. But you know, we've had a long-standing relationship with with you. We approach our subjects from different angles, as I'm sure you, you're aware. But uh, um, you know, we, we we like talking to you and. and uh, uh, he's a good, good bloke. I think without further ado, we should game. get him on, don't you? Let's bring him in, yes, okay. indeed. Uh, Hugh Newman. Hey. <laughs> Welcome Hugh. to the prehistory, guys. Have you been hearing what I've been saying about you? I have. I'm delighted, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, well, welcome. It's good to have you on, and mm. uh, uh, so much to talk about, isn't there? A lot happening this year. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Yeah, most of it online, mind you, but uh, at least it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, d d I mean, did it happen online last year, or was it just a uh, did COVID just completely put the kibosh on it? Yeah, last year we had to just cancel it really because it was yeah. all happening a bit a bit too close to the conference. That was a bit unfortunate. We were looking at going online, but we just couldn't get anything together in time. And yeah. and uh, yeah, it was a bit chaotic. So we let it go. And uh, yeah, so luckily we just you know well, un well unluckily we can't do it live this year. Yeah. And so we were kind of forced to go online, and it's just naturally fallen into place. I mean, a lot of people. I mean, I think everybody knows how to use Zoom and online chat you know yeah. platforms now so by by now everyone should be fine with it and it should run smoothly if all goes well but um yeah. and you guys like the experts of you know zoom i think and online conferencing now you must be you're at it every day virtually i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> well for the yeah. last two days anyway yeah but i mean i noticed you know a lot of our folk are here from uh, from our patreon uh, community um if they're probably fully aware of megalithomania and uh, Hume, Newman and all that <laughs> means. But for those who don't, say a little bit about um, megalithomania. It's been going a long time now, hasn't it? 
it, it, yes, been going a while. We set it up uh, back in 2006. Beltane 2006 was the first one. Um, myself, John Martineau, who's the people might know as the publisher of Wooden Books, and, and mm. a writer himself, and also Gareth Mills, who ran the Speaking Tree Bookshop. But we were we were hugely inspired, you know, as you know, by the work of John Michel. Yeah. He was kind of like um, like a modern, you know, antiquarian visionary kind of. Yeah like to open up unusual subjects that people hadn't been looking at for a while um, back in the late 60s, early 70s. But he wrote a book called Megalithomania in 1982. And that was sub subtitled Artists, Antiquarians and Archaeologists of the Old Stone Monuments. And yeah. really it's about, you know, that book was about how people become obsessed, crazy for these stones, all these different walks of life, whether they're academic, they're kind of uh, strange people from Glastonbury or whatever. <laughs> and it affects people in a really profound way. It takes over mm. their life. It becomes a mania. And this is and this is kind of like the inspiration why we, we, we got permission to use the name for the conference. And John Michel was there at the first few conferences before he died in 2009. And we really set it up. As you know, because you were there, like, what, the third conference, 2008? Yeah, was that only the um, third? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was our third one. And, um, yeah, and really we set it up to, like, bridge the alternative with the academic, have a bit of both kind of blending together. So mm. we really try and push for, like, quite well-known archaeologists and historians and other people to join our conference. And we make it very clear we're in Glastonbury. Um, yes. and we're not, we're not like a, an academic institution and, and it seems to work. And we just yeah. seem to bridge this gap, bringing all these different disciplines, some really far out stuff, but some really grounded academic archeologists and things like this. And, and we think it, you know, this subject kind of needs, you know, multiple angles of disciplines to kind of get your head around it all. Yeah. It needs to keep the doors open, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, keep it's something for everybody, and um, yeah, and, and the thing is that with the best wool in the world, you know, I mean, there there are uh, there's a lot of people out there who who do approach the whole subject in just such hugely different ways. Uh, you know, people who might be interested in an aspect of mythology that rather than any kind of archaeology. So it's great to have something that that really gives the space for all of that to happen in one. Uh, you know, one great weekend. It's, uh, yeah. it's a good thing to do. Uh, and yes, and that's and right, S Sibylla. Um, Megalopolania started as a as a conference. You know, it, it is a conference, isn't it? Uh, the, the, fundamentally, yeah. fundamentally, that's, yeah. That's, the that's annual where it all event began. is. Yeah the, yeah, the big annual event. And it really is, you know, I think if people aren't aware, that the, you know, we, we do the tours as well. And obviously not this year, but yeah. we do like four days of tours. We get, we go to, you know, we have private access to Stonehenge some years. It's getting ridiculously expensive nowadays, obviously. But we also go to obscure sites. You know, we have a tour around Glastonbury so people can get a taste of that. And and, and to be honest with you, Glastonbury is a great place to spend a few days if you want to mm -hmm. kind of get it. And, we, and we tend to get lucky with the weather most years. Um, and, yeah, it's good fun. I mean, uh, I, I enjoy it. I mean, doing an online one's a bit different. But um, yeah. I think it might be a good experience to kind of, you know, do it mm. that way anyway. <laughs> well, it mixes it up a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> so what kicked off your mania with the stones, Hugh? Yeah, I, I came in from a, a very strange angle, I've got to be honest with you. I was uh, into very esoteric stuff and like mm. um, paranormal stuff from a young age. I was kind of my parents subscribed to the unexplained magazine uh which oh, some of your right. listeners yeah, might, yeah. might remember um yeah. and so i was kind of drawn into that side of things from a very early age and, and weirdly my mum and dad when i but even before i was born in the very early years of my life I had a camper van and we're driving to stonehenge avebury silbury hill all these sites uh so i was getting that experience I can't remember any of it, obviously, but um, so I was getting near to these sites before I was born when I was, my mum was pregnant with me and, um, you know, the first few years of my life. And then my mum was always taking us to ancient sites and different countries and things like this. So kind of got, 
you know, so it all kind of combined. And then as soon as you started getting out into the landscape in Wiltshire, I was kind of drawn into these crop circles for a while. And mm-hmm. that they cut, I was thinking, what is going on with these? So it took me out into the landscape and it was, it kind of tricked yeah. me into becoming a megalithomaniac. Um, <laughs> and like I got tricked by the crop circles uh, and, <laughs> and, and then it just changed. Everything went megalithic in my life and uh, yeah, yeah. I became obsessed by this sort of sake, the idea of this sort of sacred landscape and what the ancients were really doing um and then since then it kind of it's kind of just boom that's it that, that's what I'm, this is what i'm supposed to be doing so i mean as you know you just it just takes you and you can't you can't do anything about it after a while this is you know the fundamentals <laughs> of what being a megalithomaniac <laughs> is it, uh, it uh, does take uh, get legs of its own doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, yes. you know, our, our heads explode several times a year, don't they, Rupert? They if do. Not month. They do. <laughs> if and, not on a monthly uh, basis. Well, it, <laughs> it's just that there is it. You could do this for lifetimes, and uh, and we'll only ever scratch the surface. So mm. That, mm. that's one of the joys of it, though, isn't it? You know, mm. every day you learn something new, and you can't mm. ask for more from life, really. How hard was it kicking off the first, very first Megalithomania conference? Uh, you know, was, yeah. Was it was it a, an idea that came ready formed, or did you just does it an uphill struggle? And uh, it was tough. Yeah. yeah, it was quite tough. But I mean, having, having John Martino, who's yeah, yeah. like a, a powerhouse, you know, he and uh, and John Michelle kind of giving us the green light and encouraging us to use the name and and have mm. you know have his backing was was. A, made a big mm-hmm. difference and yeah i mean there's no there's no money being made for the first few years to be honest with you i mean and, and it's not really as you know megaliths aren't big money or anything like this <laughs> but it but it but we, you know you have this passion for something and you just have to do it and so we just did mm-hmm. it and we and we kind of mm-hmm. grew it uh and just just decided that we're going to do this every year you know we just we we kind of everything is almost exactly the same as it was when we started we, we find that quite odd we've got the same branding same mm. style of everything the, you know the old the old kind of antiquarian images with the psychedelic overlay yeah. with the megalithomania mm. banner with a black line behind it and uh, and we're st- and we're stuck with that um yeah. and lots of speakers come back every year but it is hard because you, you like you know you, you've got to just create something from nothing as you know you know doing your movie yeah. um yeah. You know, creating a podcast, things like this, you got to, you know, start from scratch. But there was an interest there, and we knew that. I mean, John, John Martin, I kept pointing out, look, there's a there's a gap here. People want to go and hear about the megaliths. They want to hear people speak. They keep, they got all these books of and this alternative world mm. mixing it up with the academic. Yeah, and it, and it just kind of grew, and uh, we just kept doing it. And we haven't stopped since, and it's unlikely to stop at this rate. I mean, there's this, mm-hmm. this high interest in the ancient world, more discoveries constantly being made. This mm-hmm. is what surprises me. You think everything should be known by now, but my God, it's just, it gets more and more bewildering as more and more ideas, new technologies like LIDAR and other such things, new dating techniques yeah. are being emerging um suddenly everything's changing you know within our own lifetimes of a whole thing that was going on thousands of years ago so yeah, it's yeah. quite an interesting time to witness this as our technology um gets to a higher level we're able to understand the ancients much more and i think that's that's one of the keys to why there's such a high interest in this mm-hmm. it's so, only true i mean it's growing, it's growing so much because of that you know that it's there's a lot less guesswork involved now, and I think that excites people, you know, mm-hmm. which uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know explains the growing numbers in, uh, uh, of people interested. So, uh, uh, no, it's exciting. The, the list of people that you've got this year is um, uh, it's going to make for an interesting weekend, isn't it? I was just going to say, tell us about uh, Megalithomania 2021. Uh, mm. Yeah, which, da- um, which dates for? I've I've yeah. put a. A link in the description um, below you know, will take you through to the booking page and uh, all the sure. details. But you say here, yeah. Well, we've got um, we've got some regulars who come back every few years, like Robin Heath, who's done a huge amount of research on Stonehenge. He's he's just added to the lineup recently, and he's going to join us next year physically as well. Uh, but mm-hmm. he's been doing 
you know, research on the Bluestone site in Wales, something you've been talking about. And yeah. obviously there's a whole Mike Parker Pearson. He's speaking there, Mike Parker Pearson. And actually sure. Robin and him know each other quite well, even though they're from completely different kind of coming in from different angles of the whole yeah. subject. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it is quite complimentary, really. And, you know, we've got Martin Sweatman as well, who's doing uh, his prehistory to code it, which is a fantastic book. Oh, I, think, yes. I don't know if he's been on your show, but he taught, you know, he's an, he's an academic yeah. from up here. He's, well, Somebody in our, uh, uh, on Patreon pointed us in uh, his direction uh, just recently. Mm-hmm. Let's follow that up. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and he does a lot of statistical analysis uh, on, you know, like the glyphs found at Gebekli Tepe, and, and he's worked out that there could be some kind of astronomical and astrological kind of system there. And he, and, but he's not just speculating, he's doing, you know, specific statistical data on it and, and coming up with yeah. the odds yeah. of it happening and, and, re, and, and approaching it from a very academic viewpoint although the subject appears quite far out but it's actually really really interesting his take on it um so we were delighted when he agreed to to come down as well um and we have people like Howard Crowhurst from Karnak, Britain. He's actually from Yorkshire, but he's been living mm-hmm. in Brittany for many years. Uh, I think, I don't know if you met him already or, or heard his lectures, but he's he does a lot of work on the geometry and the metrology of these sites. But he, he is. is <laughs> I a find bit of his a, work very disturbing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, well you can't mainly argue because with it's, stuff, it's, it's so, so flipping compelling. You know, I think yeah. I don't want to go yeah. down that route because yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't, you know, pull it apart. I can't. I've got to take him at, at, at face value. Enough if what he's you can't argue saying. With it. You can't argue no, you can't. It. Um, not really. Well, he, um, his, his stuff is outrageous. I mean, it's if it's if it's correct, it. You know, it's oh, I know. it proves I know. the sophistication, and but you know, it's like with many of these, you know, like Howard, like other people, like Robin Heath, they're looking at like invisible elements of these sites. Yes. You're kind of working it out mm-hmm. from the the bare bones of what's still there, and so yeah. again, uh, and he's but he's he's like a master mathematician and geometer so you know he's, he's way up there you know this is what john michelle was as well and john martino yeah. they're all kind of and, and robin heath they're all really good with the math- mathematics the astronomy and the geometry and so he kind of pushes people to kind of reach and get their head around that and, and yeah. that's really yeah. the you know, the fundamental you know language really of these ancient people where they were applying into the design of not just the sites but the landscape you know and the connection mm-hmm. between these sites and this is often overlooked you know um and so to have that kind of mixed with the very sophisticated archaeology which is going on now at, at a single conference mm-hmm. is, is is delightful mm-hmm. you know for people like me who are just you know want to try and get the answers so and then, yeah we have a bunch of other people there's some guy called michael bott and i think rupert soskin are soskin. supposed to be speaking <laughs> yeah. um, oh. uh, <laughs> What are you guys going to be? What were you thinking of? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Uh, We're we're going to be doing a fun one actually, uh, where we decided that we would uh, uh, that we would tell people about our favourite archaeological archaeological discoveries from the last eighteen months, really. Uh, because there's there's so much stuff as you know as we were saying so much stuff being discovered all the time and you can only report on so much of it uh so uh so you know we thought that you know there's so much stuff there that people probably won't have heard about um you know that that's just got to be good to share it really yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, we'll get them. <laughs> we'll find that everybody knew about it anyway, Rupert. It was, we, we're, hey. we're behind the times. Mind you, we did discover a whole <laughs> civilization that nobody knew about a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Um, do you know, we work hard all the time. <laughs> We'll do our best to enthrall folk. Uh, we're, we're on at half past nine uh, in the morning on uh, Saturday, the 8th of May. Is that correct? I think so. No, you're l- definitely not going to be on that early, that's for sure. Uh, no, um, it, won't be, it, won't, it won't be before 10. 
okay. at the very earliest. Um, and uh, we, we, we are looking at shifting it back an hour or two because we've got right. a lot, suddenly a bunch of American um, megalithomaniacs and oh, others. Yeah, so we, we might have to do that. But we'll see. We're going we're gonna to have a little think about that and look who's booked from where and yeah, try and mm-hmm. fit it around everybody's time zone. So yeah. it definitely won't be earlier. But it might be a bit later. Um, so right. nine thirty, no chance. Okay, just what, what a no treat for everybody over that weekend, though. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey. and it's good because also yeah. we have a whole bunch of um, people who've got their whole weekend free. Well, everyone's got every weekend free at the moment, obviously. But it's um, you know, and they they just want you know people want something to do. And but we're going to rec- everything's going to be uh, available afterwards as well. Yeah, so we're going to make yeah. sure those mm-hmm. that have signed up, if they can't catch every lecture, obviously, they can actually mm-hmm. um, you know enjoy it at their leisure. You know, um, okay, yeah. their feet up kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so yeah, it should work out. Yeah, it is one of the joys of doing things online, isn't it? That you can make them available after. Is that something that you've uh, that you've done in the past? Recorded everything and then posted it online afterwards. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do do that generally. Yeah, we we like to do that because uh, so many people who just can't come to a conference. Some people can't get online mm. to watch conferences fully and things like this. So we we mm-hmm. used to live stream some conferences as well, um, but we found that quite challenging. Uh, difficult with the internet goes down for one minute it can throw things out oh, for like six sure. hours yeah. Uh, yeah. and but yeah. um yeah but we do tend to film everything you know and put it online and do, do it the best quality we can because it's a great archive really you've got this yeah. sequence of megalithic research from all these disciplines being recorded over so far what 17 year what 15 whatever it is year period yeah um, you... and it becomes a great archive for researchers as well not just for like, sure. entertainment Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I tell you one thing that we uh, envy. I mean, maybe our fault for not getting our heads uh, round it. That that you you've used uh, megalithomania as leverage to get yourself out and about there. You've been to uh, uh, so many more places than uh, the, than we have, mind you. We did take a break, didn't we, Rupert? <laughs> We, we did. Yeah, I think that's the one. measure of it. Hugh's been consistent. He's year after year after year, you know, since uh, 2006. And, uh, you know, mm. the fact that you, you've got 100,000 um, uh, YouTube um, I know. Uh, that's subscribers. Surprising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that surprised me a little bit. That's um, a good number. But, yeah, that, that's nice. It's nice to get that, yeah. I mean, we've been yeah. at it for a long time, though, and we're, we're constant with the content. I mean, we have, um, obviously, all the lectures from the conferences, but I do a lot of traveling, have done uh, yeah. as much as I possibly can, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just while while it's, you know, you can do it it's... kind of thing. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, film all that and put little, you know, yeah. clips of that up as well. Yeah. Is there a major megalithic site in the world that you haven't been to? There's a few, actually, yeah. yeah. There's quite a few. There's one I'm desperate to go to, um, yeah. which is probably the furthest one away, is <laughs> Nam Madol in um, <laughs> okay. Micronesia. Yeah. Uh, that's really one. But I'm planning, I've been planning that for three years with my, my good friend Stuart Mason, who lives out in Australia. So we're, we're, we're mm-hmm. working that one out, but we'll have to see what happens. Um, there's the whole. There's all these sites in um, the Far East. There's the specific sites in... Japan, I'm interested in. China, I've not been to. India as well. There's a mm-hmm. huge amount going on there. Yeah. So that, that those kind of areas, I've not had much chance. But um, uh, they're the ones that kind of, uh, you know, it gives you something to look forward to, I guess, you know, if you mm-hmm. haven't got out there sure. yet. But let's see what happens with, you know, uh, hopefully the pandemic will calm down and we can actually get out and about and enjoy mm-hmm. uh, traveling again. Yeah, absolutely. There is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> a standout favourite of uh, of the ones you have visited worldwide? That's a good question. That um, I just don't know, to be honest with you. I, I, I mean, to me, they're all my favourite. You know, this is like a, <laughs> bit of a, a zen, a, annoying answer. Um, but it's I go I go to a site where you have to traipse for three miles to see one standing stone, which is five foot tall. And I'm as excited as I am if I go to Machu Picchu. Um, and so 
you know, th that's why it's it's hard for someone like me, who's a hardcore megalithomaniac, to answer that question <laughs> because everywhere is like, ah, oh, I'm just like a kid in the candy store. Every opportunity. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but yeah, there's. I mean, recently I've been in Mexico. I've been this is about my fifth or sixth time going to Mexico. That for some reason that country just grabs my attention, and and it's surprisingly megalithic. A lot of people don't realize this. There's you got the Olmecs there, for instance, along yeah. the whole Gulf Coast area. There's a whole bunch of stuff that no one knows about south of Mexico City and Morelos and Guerrero State, which are hugely megalithic sites. Um, mm. There's uh, some of the Maya sites, in the Yucatan even, and at Palenque in Japas, is they've got megalithic foundations, which are completely overlooked. And the dating mm -hmm. is is a bit wrong there, that they've got, they've got this sort of wrong side of the day because there's new discoveries this huge platform that was found um in mexico but on the guatemala border this giant megalithic kind of platform still covered in jungle they found it with lidar which they've they, they've done some tests uh, i'm not sure exactly which test and they've dated that to at least a thousand bc but that's that looks like a standard maya site so that could suddenly push a whole load of dating back over there yeah, in line so. with potentially some you know the it would kind of fit more with the bronze age or the iron age here you know yeah. so there's things going on there which uh really really interest me um and i'm going to be working on a book about the the before you know called before, we're going to call it before the maya looking at the megalithic cultures that were there um specifically yeah. the olmec who i've been fascinated by for a decade or so now yeah mm -hmm. Sibylla uh, asks, uh, it has got a, an interesting talking point there. What about the title Megalithomania? How, how, do, how do you define m megalith? It's, it's a bit of a movable feast, you know, I, from our point of view, I suppose, isn't it? It has to be uh, somehow. Uh, but defining the edges, yeah, what's our, your definition of megalith and what would you include, stroke, include, uh, exclude? What? Well, yeah, that's 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 a good one. Well, obviously, it just means large stone or big stones. We we know that as you know technically, mm. but it's um, you know you got to look like like for instance, the pyramids of Giza are megalithic. You know, people may, some people yeah. who maybe not been there don't realize the stones there, there's up to seventy ton blocks of granite in the interior. So that's a megalithic site. So pyramids can be megalithic, and we found a bunch like as I just mentioned in Mexico that have megalithic aspects to them they have huge uh, stelae some of them are like 15 feet tall uh mm -hmm. you have foundations entire platforms made of megaliths so they're and, and technically there's a group of sites in the maya world that are called megalithic because of these big stones and so mm -hmm. it is going on there you know that's the official academic term for them and so you have that going on there but even just a, even a standing stone which is three feet high can be megalithic even though it's not a large stone as such so mm, yeah mm. It, it is a movable thing because you have like small you have stone circles in um you know parts of ireland like bigmore and so forth which have got tiny stones but <laughs> lots of circles yeah. and that's still is that still a megalithic site or is that a neal you know a neolithic would you call that I, I there's, think, there's, there's think, question well, marks like this question. Yeah, really. It's a good is. question. I mean, it's um, interesting from Sibylla because uh, Sibylla works in stone, you know, um, uh, as, as so. I hope that answers your question, uh, the Sibylla. Mm -hmm. Have you got a definition for yourself there, Rupert? Well, megalithic. Well, yeah. a megalith is a big stone. What can you do? Um, <laughs> well, I, I, it's, it's curious, you know, because you see photographs of standing stones and what have you, you think, well... <laughs> What's so great about that? But you stand next to it and, you, and say, could I lift that without help? No, that's a megalith. <laughs> um, could go down that route. <laughs> well, yeah, OK. I suppose I wouldn't call it like a breeze block size. That's not a megalith. No. That's not a big stone. It's just a stone, isn't yeah. it? I think... Um, <laughs> well, you know, last night, we were talking on our broadcast last night, we were talking about uh, one of the stone circles in Wales. Um, yes. We were, were talking about mine more. Um, and all the stones there are tiny. Um, but even the tiny ones, you'd struggle to lift one up on your own. Mm. And I think that's probably the point, isn't it? You know, that it, if it requires sufficient effort that one person is going to struggle to do it, yeah, that's <laughs> megalithic, isn't it? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a it's a funny one to get around to defining it, but I think it's a sort of one that uh, yeah, there's a there's an agreement about out there. <laughs> yes. And, Unless now, having asked the question, we're going to cause <laughs> ructions. And then perhaps we should move on. <laughs> uh, Any, dear. Anyway, no, yeah. no problems with the title of uh, uh, Megalithomania. Um, no. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice that you get... Uh, uh, Mike Parker Pearson has been uh, last year and the year before... Uh, well, last year obviously it didn't happen, but the year before he was down. Uh, well, the uh, the year before he was booked, but yeah. he was having his um, he was having an operation on his hip, I think, and oh, and yeah. he and he couldn't do it. It was too close after, um, and he was in recovery. So he he, he pulled out. I said, "Don't worry, I'll come back next year." Oh, bless, and we had yeah. Julian Richards. Uh, Julian Richards stepped in and did a great lecture. You know, he did a brilliant mm -hmm. lecture, looking at yeah. you know similar subjects, you know, the whole Stonehenge yeah. landscape and so forth. And then Mike was going to come back uh, last year, and yeah. then didn't it happen. Didn't, and now yeah. he's coming this year online. So, uh, so at last, Mike Parker Pearson will be speaking at Megalithomania. It's taken a while, All right. but hopefully it'll be worth a wait. So you you have had the the two of the big four contemporary Stonehenge uh, guys there. So that's Mike Parker Pearson, Julian Richards. The two to get as Tim Darvel and uh, Mike Pitts, uh, I guess. And anybody else? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. There's 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 a few people. I mean, I think you've spoken to what, Vince Gaffney. He's done some amazing work as well. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. And, and yeah, we're gonna you know in, in time uh, we're gonna you know the more. Uh, archaeologists we get to speak especially the, the caliber of Julian Richards and Mike Parker Pearson hopefully that will open the door for others to consider joining yeah. us and not yeah, yeah. look mm -hmm. at us with like wide open eyes at Glastonbury and, and I think <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that so mm -hmm. let's let's yeah. hopefully that'll open some doors and, and, and we've you know everyone there hugely respects the whole archaeology world we're not like a bunch of you know kind of crazy people we like uh there's a genuine <laughs> interest in like what archaeologists are discovering you know it's not mm, like mm. so there's a good you know like i said there's there's a balance between these these two worlds and and i mm. think as people kind of grow into studying these ancient sites they want to you know know what's actually being taken out of the ground what's being analyzed and dated not just uh not just theories they want to have a look at what's actually going on and i think uh um you know, obviously, people like Mike. He's been at it for ten years in the in around Stonehenge and the Blue Stone landscape in West Wales. So yeah, yeah. he's actually been there doing it. You know, making discoveries. Um, you know, and so it's a delight to have him involved. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me more about uh, uh, what they need to do. You know, where to, where to go, how much it's going to cost them, how, how how do they register, and all that kind of stuff. That's uh, yes, yeah, all on it's all on the, the website megalithomania.co.uk. Um, mm. Yeah, it's like basically just under fifty quid is the early bird kind of thing. And that's for the whole weekend. That's like I think eleven talks or something like that in a speakers forum. And mm. hopefully we're going to have like little breakout rooms, uh, things like that. But we, that's like the super early kind of bird price and that was supposed to end a few days ago last week but we've extended it partly because mm -hmm. i wanted to come on this show and make sure all your listeners had the opportunity to get a decent price ticket but it's going to go up in about a week about mid-april we're going to put it up just a little bit because you know it's it's just uh we want to get as many people you know enjoying it as possible uh without you know precluding others i mean because i've looked at some other other conferences of a similar ilk in different parts of the world and that they, they charge hundreds of pounds or yeah, dollars yeah. and uh mm -hmm. and so yeah we, we hope mm -hmm. it's affordable for everybody but we do have to pay the speak speakers as you know um yeah. and um and there's a lot of background work and crew that have to are going to be assisting and mm -hmm. uh yeah i think it'll be quite good fun actually uh especially if you guys are going to be there so uh, look forward to it. <laughs> great yeah as i say um uh, l link is in the description uh, below straight to yeah. uh, the, the booking it's site, it, re so. it really is good value i mean you, you've got such mm. a range of of speakers and it is it's a solid weekend you know so it is it's great value i mean so, did you but, know um do you, do you know the work of Gail Higginbottom? Because she's uh, coming over from 
uh, mm. we're not coming over. She's going to be talking from Australia. Ooh. and She's been doing some really interesting work. On... What's she been doing? Because I really know that name and I can't place yeah, it. Yes, I think she was involved in the DNA research, which was like, um, you know, tracking migrations and other such things. Um, and she's now... And she's applied that to a lot of Scottish, the early landscapes of the Scottish megalith. So that's where she's going to be focusing on. Oh, she's okay. actually doing a two two oh, part right. lecture. So she's okay. very much an academic as well, you see. Yeah. Um, and so, and uh, and she kind of, you know, she was introduced to us really by um, Andy Andy Burnham from uh, megalithic.co.uk, oh, yeah. yeah. um, and he he really recommended we should get her to speak. She's a brilliant speaker, apparently. Um, so I looked into it, and she she looks amazing. Uh, like she's going to deliver some really really interesting stuff. So Fantastic. so that's I mean that's someone I I wasn't really aware of, but I, I looked yeah. back into her work, and she's done some quite interesting papers and articles, and mm-hmm. kind of made a few little breakthroughs as well. So um, mm. so she's a very interesting person to have. A wonderful Thanks. smorgasbord of it entertainment is. and education you have <laughs> arranged for us all. <laughs> <laughs> and Sue Butler says, can we have a prehistory guy's breakout room, please? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, I, I, think, um, I think it's when you can Zoom people into uh, small oh, right. groups. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we've been encouraged, shall we say, to have uh, at the conference to have a breakout room called the George and Pilgrim Pub, um, where people can like <laughs> have a drink together <laughs> virtually. <laughs> so that's that's going to be nice one of the idea. breakouts because that's that. where everyone goes after during lunch yeah, and dinner. That's yeah. a nice idea. In, in the <laughs> evenings of megalithomania, yeah. So, so they can actually, and, they, and, they, and a whole bunch of people can kind of hang out there and like chat and catch up. So we're kind of looking at it from. Uh, um, yeah, you know, from that perspective as well, you know, try because you yeah. know, you know, because we've been going for so long, we've we've become like a big megalithic family. So everyone meets yeah. up every year for their annual kind of get together, bit like a mm. moot, you know, like a moot get, getting together with all your kind of uh, yeah. your tribes coming together for yeah. one once a year. So uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting way doing it online, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's, it's been great, be great talking to you, uh, Hugh. Thank you so much for for joining us, and uh, I'm glad. You know, we're very glad to have the opportunity to help um, promote uh, Megalithomania as yeah. well, because I've got fond memories of all those years ago <laughs> being with you in in, uh, in, in Glastonbury, and uh, we're grateful, you know, you know, for your support down the years as well. Um, so, unless there's anything else we've missed, uh, Rupert and, uh, and no, I don't think so. Hugh. I mean, it, it's it's pretty much it's pretty much a month today, isn't it? So, uh, oh, good. Yeah. one yeah, month tomorrow, one, yeah. one month, month tomorrow, to go, yeah, one month. Oh, I mean, the, the, Hugh, there Hugh, was one, yes. happy birthday! Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely forgot. It, it's the it's, man's it's, birthday today. Yeah, this is what this is what I do on my birthday. I hang out all with together now. This is, this, yeah. this is my party. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Uh, yeah. um, oh well. I, I, it, I, I'd like to say I wish you were going out for a drink, but um, but there yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. Well, in the easier times, we were sort of all arranged to meet at the um, Red Lion, isn't it? In the middle of Avery or something yes. like that. Yeah. Or at that's, the Druid's that's, that's Arms. A, yeah. That's right. Stanton that's Druid. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I could just mention um, uh, there's a couple more speakers I didn't I didn't mention. Oh, I, sure. I yeah. Yeah. Sorry. There, there's, one, there's one or two which I don't know. I mean, a lot of, a lot of these speakers, I mean, for instance, one of them is Alan Wilson. Uh, Alan Wilson, um, he's like a he's like a independent historian. He's done some mm. remarkable work. I mean, he can't. He's going to have a pre-recorded segment within the lecture of Ross Broadstock, who's his friend, and they co-publish things together. And he has done some stunning research. I'm sure some of your listeners will know who he is because he's kind of translated many ancient Welsh texts, looking at the going back to the Iron mm. Age and Bronze Age, oh, talking wonderful. about the origins of Britain. And mm. he's been ignored by the establishment. He's frustrated that he's not his stuff hasn't been kind of taken on board that's partly because he hasn't got an academic background but thankfully he's written it all down and it's all in books and it's all going to be kind of um available you know it's, you mm. know after mm. he's getting quite he's getting on a bit now it's like in his late 80s i think so okay. yeah. he wouldn't have he wouldn't have been able to come to the conference anyway he would have had a 
a pre-recorded sort of lecture prepared for us so and also his mm -hmm. colleague ross broadstock based mm -hmm. upon this this retranslation of this early welsh language they found this strange egyptian connection where suddenly all the hieroglyphs make sense to, if you apply it to this early welsh language this early welsh text and he's found this connection there along with alan uh, that's something he's going to be looking at as well so it sounds a bit out there interesting but i've looked at ross ross's new book and it, it is strangely compelling there's something about what he's discovered and that's, that's, that's kind of brand new it's just all this kind of stuff just sort of coming out now so we're going to see what happens with that um also there's caroline wise who's um done some excellent work on the the kind of ancient traditions of britain really and she's looking at the dear goddess uh she's she's written or edited a books about this um and the ellen of the ways you know this kind of traditional kind of um goddess who would be a crossroads and other such things and all the stories associated with that so yeah we've got a bit of a kind of you know almost like a pagan more druidic slant as yeah, well yeah. We kind of we kind of we kind of we, we we love we love the whole druidic connection we know they weren't necessarily the builders of stonehenge and things like this because they were later and things like that we, we don't we understand that but we love that kind of connection there's something that john michelle instilled into us that he really felt strongly about the connection with druids and ancient mysteries and the ancient sites really should mm. maintain a connection that they're, they're like almost like holding us on to who our ancestors were they're the ones who are mm you know who held on to the knowledge and passed it down through multiple generations and um even though people you know don't necessarily agree with modern druidry i, I think there's something to be said about it and uh um it, you know we accept that and the sort of pagan traditions into the whole philosophy of megalithomania as well as obviously the mm. academic and alternative views of you know the ancient mysteries mm. Mm. Have you, have you been, see, i've been putting a process of uh uh, procession of, uh, of goodwill messages across the screen. I don't know if you've been seeing those, Hugh. Oh, yeah, I saw a couple. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's another one. Oh, another one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was excellent. thinking, actually, you know, while we're talking of, of, of druidry, uh, etc., um, uh, there's a couple, and, of course, of um, uh, mythology. You, you've been on... Um, <laughs> Um, Anthony Murphy's show, haven't you? Uh, you talking about Irish Irish mythology? I think I think you have. I saw your name in connection with his. No, I've I've not been on his show, but I know Anthony well. He's been yeah. a speaker at Megalithomania uh, for a long since two thousand and seven. He came over in two thousand before you guys, in fact. Yeah, he oh. was there in two thousand and seven. <laughs> yeah, before we, before yeah, yeah. standing with stone, and he's, he came over a couple of years ago. So, but I know I know Anthony. I've been at Ireland a few times, and every time I go there, I meet up with him. But not been on his show yet, as such. But um, no doubt. I mean, with this new research i've been doing this research on uh the giant traditions of britain uh, that's going to be a book coming out in, in a few months oh, uh, be and, I th and a lot of it is on ireland so that's when i might go on the show perhaps then because mm -hmm. i'm very interested in these these traditions the mythology side of things that really really mm -hmm. fascinates me so mm -hmm. the, the deeper you dig into that the more kind of nuggets of truth emerge um and uh little elements that you know you may not have thought about suddenly sort of pop up and uh yeah so that that mm. fascinates me but yeah anthony's a great guy you've you you know him well you know he's uh yeah yeah he does, yeah he's uh, a yeah. good friend yeah 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 does, another guy i think good... uh, you know from, from perhaps the, the more academic side but you know who, who is you know really fond of um relating to how people relate to the stones not just from you know a, a prehistory point of view but you know in their own backyards in their own environments in their own communities you know however it may be and that's kenny brophy um the scottish uh, archaeologist uh, out of glasgow university he, he I, I think he'd be up for um a megalithomania um he's a good speaker is kenny good speaker is kenny yeah excellent mm. I think Andy Burnham recommended him actually as well. So yeah, yeah he's on our he's on our kind of future list. Mm, um, mm. We've got quite a few people uh, 
you know, hoping we're going to get for megalithomania. And there's quite a few people actually approaching us still, you know, yeah. I, th yeah. I think we get a few, you get a few, um, I think it's opening the door. I think Mike Parker Pearson and Julian Richards have really kind of helped us, but we've yeah. had, you know, people, when you have people like Ronald Hutton come and speak, he's been coming since the early days. Um, mm -hmm. And a few other kind of heads from that kind of world, and yeah, and and uh, and he's very much into his druidry and pagan traditions as well, Ronald. So, uh, yeah. uh, as well as the you know uh, more archaeological side. And do, and do you, do you know what I mean? I'm not hope I'm not speaking out of turn, and I'm not speaking on his <laughs> behalf by a, any means. But I think you'd be surprised <coughs> at. Uh, that uh, Tim Professor Tim Darvel but might be more amenable than you perhaps might uh, might think. He, he's very accommodating oh, okay. of of you know. I, I remember seeing uh, th you know the TV programs that were centred around his two thousand and six dig at Stonehenge. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that he was not dismissive because uh, the, the the druids turned out and blessed the the dig, blessed the archaeology. You know, it was it was perfectly, absolutely fine with that. And also, he's got a project called um, 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 oh God, it was on my tip of my tongue a, a moment ago. Um, it's integrating it, mental health with uh, with science. Yeah. What on earth? Is, um, yeah, I, I heard about see, that. We have that, too uh, many senior moments these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard about that because I was at that conference you were at down. Um, Human Henge. Down this, Human yeah, Henge. Yeah, well that's done. it. Yeah, I heard well about done. that. And also, uh, yeah, you were there. Yeah, we sat and had lunch together, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And also, um, well, Timothy Darvel as well. He's quite because he, when he was doing his bluestone work, he was very much basing that on the idea of healing stones. This Absolutely. was back in yeah. two thousand and eight. 2009 and yeah. and so he was like picking up the story of merlin and the stories yeah. of jeffrey yeah. and monmouth which is which Absolutely, is actually yeah. one of my main source books for this few this project i'm finishing up at the moment um it's quite remarkable what you find in these old texts if you, you know, analyze them carefully and yeah. um yeah so he so i knew he was open-minded but you know he doesn't he's not a druid himself is he no, not quite. No, no. But he's open to. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, he's not. I think that. Uh... I think there's a lot of secret druids that are going to be revealed soon. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> he's a he's a guitar god monk. Eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, I've heard you're a guitar god as well, Michael. I, you know, I've heard oh, some of your little your little twins on time. your Da Vinci Code, your Da Vinci Code video and all that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yes. I, yeah, I, I don't have time for it being a prehistory guy. Gosh, but I'm not complaining. Uh. No, no, we need to make more time. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> very um, good, good very good. Well, is there more note, questions? Just think, is there more? Uh, is there more questions for people? Do they want us to? I'm seeing. I'm uh, seeing quite a few roll up and Ma down Michael, here. Michael, or... uh, Michael says, asks, uh, where are you, Hugh? Ah, Michael. Hello, oh, Michael. Who? Uh, who are you, Hugh? Oh, oh, <laughs> where are you, Hugh? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm actually uh, at home at the moment. Uh, I live um, not too far from Stonehenge, um, very close actually, oh, and, right. and uh, just just returned from uh, Mexico. Uh, been out there for like five months um, mm -hmm. and just escaped lockdown, thankfully. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're back here now, preparing for megalithomania. So we're very much based in the whole Salisbury Plain landscape. Is it a good place to live uh, down there, uh, Hugh? Because uh, sometime during the next 12 months, I think uh, we're going to be up, upping sticks. I thought, oh, Wiltshire, is that a possibility? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 mean I love it here, to be honest with you. It's yeah. great. I mean, just to be able to be near the stones, obviously, and the, all the mounds yeah. that are surrounding us and everything else. And, and yeah, you can just sort of check out all the little digs. And I, I was bumped into a few years ago, I was bumping into Mike Parker Pearson and Julian Richards mm. on the la you know, wandering the landscape trying to dig holes and stuff so that was quite fun um mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah it's, it's okay around here but you know at the moment you know i've not been here for a few months and i can't go out so um uh, i can't really currently tell you <laughs> what it's like <laughs> until i get out again but uh yeah. i'm sure it, yeah but it's, it's, it's nice you know I, I love it around here this is uh i've, I've lived i lived in glastonbury for many years where we hold the conference yeah which is a great place to live that is huge fun uh <laughs> very interesting i think is the word if you like crystals there's like a crystal shop every seven meters or something um and so it's 
you know, it's, it's a wonderful place. A lot of good friends live down there as well. So I do enjoy going yeah. to Glastonbury whenever I can. Yeah. I've been mean, uh, scanning the chat. I haven't uh, come across any other uh, pertinent directly questions f for you. Maybe I haven't been paying attention. Uh, Martin uh, has asked, uh, Hugh, did you interview Margaret Curtis and will you release the interview? Oh, that's did right. you do that? That's right. I did. I popped up to Kalanish in September, um, the Outer Hebrides. I was there for a week or so, uh, as well as driving through um, uh, parts of Scotland or some sites I wanted to look at. Yeah, and we, yeah, I, I, I we, I just knocked on her door and uh, she came <laughs> out and, and I interviewed her on the, in the street virtually, uh, and it was raining. Uh, quite heavily. Um, so she actually got in the car. We did a weird interview in the car. Um, but yeah, I've got a short interview with her. Um, and yeah, I haven't edited yet. And as soon as I get uh, get a chance, I will. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. You know, obviously, she, people don't know she's um, done some a lot of the breakthrough discoveries up on in that part of the world, basically. Um, yeah. yeah. She, she used to be partners with uh, Gerald Pontin, who's written a couple of very good books on Kalani. He actually spoke at Megalithomania back in 2007. Um, mm. And between them, they made a lot of discoveries. And Margaret carried on living there for many years mm. um, and just carried doing it, carried on doing it. And, uh, and no one else was really doing it. There was a few universities doing this, that and the other. But she just became like the woman of Kalani and like... Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'll definitely get that ready. Thanks for the reminder, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Oh, my... Hey. Are you finding the? I'm off a bit off the scale here, but are the new drone UK drone rules are a bit of a problem uh, yeah, a, for us? I'm aware of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, personally, I'm. A, I've got my qualification now. The, the yeah, I'm going to do uh, that thing. That. Yeah, uh, it's changed a little bit. I got it before the end of you know before it changed uh, at the end of last year. Um, yeah, as long as you you know you've got your qualification there, you know you can pretty much um, you know within reason you can do a lot of sites. Yeah. You know if you do it the right way and you, you sort of make you plan it correctly and things like this and get relevant yeah. permissions in some places. Other places you don't need permission if they're open land and things like this. But yeah, yeah it's uh, going abroad with it as well is uh, very yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah. That can be challenging trying to you know speak different languages, trying to get permissions and things like that. But generally people are kind of kind of okay with it um yeah, mm -hmm. i think you just got to do it respectfully not fly over anyone's head uh, yeah. don't crash it don't crash it anywhere uh, especially <laughs> ancient sites um <laughs> you'll be all right <laughs> uh, very good uh, mm. right I, th I think that's about it for this evening anyway we, we must do this more often yeah we yeah, should absolutely. really we should. Too much catching up to do. I mean, it's, it's terrifying how quickly the weeks fly by. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we really should. You know, we, we have such vibrant communities. And, uh, you know, as you said, you know, that, that you know, we develop these communities almost accidentally. And now, every, you know, and everybody gets to know each other. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, introducing them to other communities has got to be a good thing to do, hasn't it? So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, thanks, yeah. guys. I appreciate it. Um, it's good to catch up with you guys. I, I, I tune into quite a lot of your shows, to be honest with you, and uh, I'm laughing away. You know, having a great time. So, uh, and, uh, well, we and enjoy if it, anyone, don't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if anyone out there who's listening hasn't seen Standing with Stones, you've got to see that. I know you've been doing your weekly, was it weekly kind of uh, segments, what commentary, but yeah. but people check that out. That is like the ultimate megalithic documentary. Um, you really got. Thanks, really got to see that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it stands up strongly today as well. I think people, if you haven't mm. seen it, it kind of it's, you know stands the test of time, and uh, I think it will do for years to come. And I understand you might be working on more, doing another one. Is that correct? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we've, uh, we've yeah. kicked it off already. Yeah. We're crazy, still, but it needs still, doing. Yeah, it is. Yes, still very much in the researching side of it at the moment, but yes, it's mm. definitely happening. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. With I'm glad brilliant. to hear that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with that, we'll say thanks again and uh, see you again soon. Thanks, yeah. everybody, yeah, we'll, for uh, and we'll watching see tonight. You all and, uh, 
yeah, for your questions and everything and engaging online and all being sweet and nice with each other too. Excellent job. <laughs> Sorry, Rupert, you were going to yeah. say? No, I was just going to say, see you at Megalithomania in a month's time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Look, for with that? Uh, look forward to it, guys. Thanks a lot. Night-night, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Good to see you.